I want to share something with you um, that happened to me on Friday. So I wasn't really sure where I was going to go, but um, I'm actually journaling uh, this season of life for River of Life Ministry since God had showed me that, that it's time to start putting um, into motion an addition, um, building our new sanctuary and things like that. So it's a big one. It's 500 seats. That's what God said. I cannot deviate from that. I have to stay on point. Um, and so even though I, I know what the Lord has said and I've done what he has said, you know, I went and I, I um, reached out to the people that are going to, I believe, be part of this. And they're very busy men, professional men, and it's going to be a sacrifice for them to even do something like draw plans up for us and get us at least that far. And, um, but anyways, this, this song, I Trust in God, you know, he's our Savior, and he, he knows the timing, he knows what to do in all of our lives, but I'm just going to use um, us today as an example of the things that God is going to do. So he told me back in 2014 to prophesy a 500-seat sanctuary, and of course I didn't want to do that. I wanted to prophesy a 300-seat sanctuary, and I knew that God was telling me to speak this into existence, and it was scary and I said, well, how about 300? And he said, no, because man can fill a 300-seat sanctuary, but only God can fill a 500-seat sanctuary. You guys know the story. However, um, 400 people in a 500-seat sanctuary fills a house. And um, so anyways, I, I spoke what he said, and it's been a lot of years. We're going on 10 years now because he spoke it to me, I believe, in December. I have to find it. It's written in my Bible, but I got a lot of stuff written in my Bible. So, um, so anyways, uh, so now's the time. And there was a time and period when I felt like the Lord wanted us to do something, and that's when I went down to the conference in Kalamazoo, and I wasn't going to go, and some friends got a hold of me and said, hey, we have a ticket, I have a place for you to stay, you need to come. And I went, and, um, and there God gave me a word, and he told me if I would wait. He knew that I would be obedient because he seen my heart. He seen that I was going to pull the trigger and start going forward. And down there, he sent me there so he could speak to me again, and he spoke to me through a man, and he, he didn't know what was happening. And he told me that there was a very big um, big thing that God was asking me to do, and I was being willing to do it and going to step into it and because I trust not God. And he said, but now the Lord now the Lord is saying, so God, to be remember this when God gives you words and then another one comes. Because he said, but now what I hear the Lord saying, if you'll wait, if you'll wait, I will send in the help that you need. And so I seen these two in my mind's eye. I seen these two forklifts coming. My hands were under the middle of the church, and the two forklifts were coming, and that was finances and helps, people to help. And so uh, that's where we've been sitting since then. And um, so now we're at this place where God is saying it's time to move. And um, you can't go by what you see in the natural you can't go by what you think. You have to understand that his ways are not our ways and his thoughts aren't our thoughts. And so we have to trust him. We've had many, 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 many people come and visit and come and go here um, as far as visitors. Um, and, and I do know that being as small as we are, we're kind of squashed together, so we have plenty of chairs for people. That can be uncomfortable for people, and the Lord showed me that as well a couple of weeks ago. Well, um, since then, I've gotten a few words from people, um, and I've, I've journaled them. Uh, one of them came from Jaden on, I think it was Wednesday, and I got one from Dewey on Monday, and I journaled that as well. And um, because it's so important when God is calling you to do something or asking you to step out in faith, that 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 he he'll endorse that he'll encourage you and it will be like from diff all these different places and so um there's been some other things happening as well but on friday 
I got super, super excited because on Wednesday afternoon, I had a meeting with somebody. And then towards the end of the meeting, um, we were talking about the church. And I was told, well, Pastor, I don't really see that. And I said, I know, we don't have the money. And, you know, but I said, I have to be obedient to God. My part is just to get the ball rolling, and it'll be God's part to change the hearts of the people and move the hearts of the people. And he said, well, I don't, the money, I can see the money coming, but he says, the people. I don't see it being filled with people. I said, listen, God knows what he's doing. And he told me back in 2014, where are all my people? Where have they gone? My churches used to be full. All of them were full. People that were serving him, people that were, but they, but they fainted. Like they fainted and just kind of walked away from God. Well, he's going to call them back. So the word that I got then from Jaden, um, she was praying about our um, addition and I had just preached Sunday about, the sh about being shaken, you know, us all being shaken. Well, then she had read in the word and her devotion um, about the shaking that is in Haggai 2. And I'm, I'm going to read what, how she sent it to me because it was, um, it was in the Anna. NIV, I think. Yes. Yeah. So I can read your, this, right? Yeah. <laughs> okay. Okay. So, um, so in, and so we're not going to go there, James. I'm going to get you where we're going. But so, anyways, this was the word that I got on Wednesday morning at, at 7 a.m. This is what the Lord Almighty says In a little while, I will once more shake the heavens and the earth the sea, and the dry land. I will shake all the nations, and what is desired by all nations will come. I will fill this house with glory, says the Lord God Almighty. And she said, good morning. I just read this after praying about River of Life expansion and felt like these verses were for you, especially since Sunday's message was, a, was called Be Shaken. So I knew that that was the Lord, and... So Friday, um, I was trying to have some time with God, and I started reading an Acts in the New Testament. And I, you know how sometimes you go to read the Bible, and you feel like you're just not in the right spot? And um, it just, I just, nothing was, like I just, I just felt like I wasn't in the right spot. So I put it down, and I asked God to take me where he wanted me to go. And now he used to do this to me on a whim and now it he doesn't do this with me all the time but he did a and I heard a uh, Haggai one and and so I went there and we're gonna actually start in verse 12 in just a minute but I want to tell you the story the very first thing that I seen in the heading was from God and it says the command to build God's house so I knew that the Lord was telling me that we are on the right track, and it is his command to build his house. Regardless of naysayers or what we see in the natural, he'll take care of it if we just step out in faith and trust him. He'll fill the house. He'll be the one that fills the house. He'll be the one that gets you prepared to minister to people. He'll be the one that will work through you. So I read all of that, but there's so many names that I just destroy. But basically, the prophet Haggai is the one that was bringing the word of the Lord, and he was telling the people it's time, but the people were saying it's not time. It doesn't look like it. It's just not time to build the house. And the Lord is saying, what? You think it's supposed to be in ruin? Now listen, guys, you have to understand that his church is laying in ruin today. We may be a body of Christ in a church, but the church in itself is laying in ruin all over the nations. And God wants to rebuild his house. And he wants his remnant to live. And so as I'm reading 
this, I'm getting super excited because I know it's God confirming what he's talking to me about. And what he's saying is, hey, even if the people don't see it, you keep your eyes on me because I'm commanding you to build the house. And so, I, and then one of the greatest, there's so many great scriptures in this. I want you to go home and read Haggai 1 and 2. But for sure one. And... Um, when I got to verse 12 through 14, was like a pop and just like, wow, we're here. We're going to do it. So I'm going to ask Tammy to come up and read because I cannot, I slaughter all of this. So Tammy, she's going to read. Let me turn it on for you. 12, all the way through to the end. Then Zerubbabel, Zerubbabel the son of Shatil, and Joshua, the son of Jehozadak, the high priest, with all the remnant of the people, obeyed the voice of the Lord their God. And the words of Haggai, the prophet, as the Lord their God had sent them. And the people feared the presence of the Lord. Then Haggai, the Lord's messenger, spoke the Lord's message to the people, saying, I am with you, says the Lord. So the Lord stirred up the spirit of Zerubbabel, the son of Shatil, governor of Judah, and the spirit of Joshua, the son of Jehozadak, the high priest, and the spirit of all the remnant of the people. And they came and worked on the house of the Lord of hosts, their God, on the 24th day of the sixth month in the second year of King Darius. Amen. Thank you. So what I wanted you to get in here is that the Lord is the one that stirred the heart of the people. So this was the word of the Lord saying, it is time. And one of the things that I had said in my meeting on um, Wednesday was God is going to be the one to stir the hearts of the people that I've reached out to because I, I did my part. So it has to be the Lord. And how that all came about is, and I sent this to David, um, but Carrie Job had, um, she has a, um, a, a, a YouTube out there. And she's sharing at Bethel Church, and it's, I don't know, the awe of God or something like that. And so she shares her testimony about um, her husband, Cody. So she was a single woman. She was singing for Christ. She was uh, in praise and worship coming out of Gateway Church. But listen, guys, she, um, she was not married, um, and she just left that in his hands. Well, for five years... Cody was on her in her band and traveled with her for five years. She never looked at him romantically. They were best friends. There's an age difference. She's older. Um, but then one day, God just opened up their eyes for one another. So I have hung on to that. Like, I'm like, God, you will be the one to open up the eyes and the hearts of the people that will jump on board and believe this and go forward in this, and so I'm just going to trust you with it. And so that's where I've been sitting. So when the Lord comes and confirms things by the word to me, it really flips my wig because I'm like, that is how he will do it often with me is he'll tell me in my spirit and show me in my heart and mind, and I'll speak it out because he tells me to, and I'll take a step of faith. And, and even though everybody doesn't understand, I know what I'm hearing. And then later, God will confirm it in his word. I'm telling you this because God will confirm the things and the promises that he's promised you in his word. He will do that. He may tell you in your natural man. He may tell you in your spirit. But he'll confirm it in his word. And so when he confirmed it, I was so excited because Zerubbabel and Joshua were the naysayers. But they were an important part of getting this building built the temple built for God because it was for his glory. It was for what he wanted. And so what happened is Haggai spoke the words. He did it. He spoke as a prophet what God wanted done. And then the Lord is the one. The Lord is the one. He says, I am with you, says the Lord. So the Lord stirred up the spirit of Jerusalem and, and also Joshua. But he also stirred up the spirit and all of the remnant of people. Guys, we have been told for many, many years that we are a remnant of the church. A remnant is a church that 
is part of the church. It's like, tore, if you take a piece of my coat and you tear it off, you have a remnant of my coat. Well, a remnant of the body of Christ are the people that are called by God that will keep going forward in the things of God regardless of what other churches look like or what other people say. If you remain remnant, you remain loyal to the word, to God, to the Trinity. You don't waver because you are a remnant people. So not only did God confirm the word and... Not only did he confirm that he'll stir, stir the hearts of those that we need to help build the house, but he's also saying, you are the remnant. I am the remnant. And I've not heard that in a while. And I'm like, oh my gosh, Lord, this was spoken so many years ago over River of Life. And because we have remained faithful, even with healing rooms, guys, we've been doing healing rooms for I don't know how many years now. We had to stop for a short period of time. Yeah, it's been like six years. Faithfully. Faithfully. It doesn't matter if one person comes from the outside or none. God said to do it. So faithfully, these people are being faithful to what God said to do. And one day, it will be used more than it's being used today. But it is still being used great and mighty already today so it's not by what we think it should look like it's trusting god what it will be Amen. it's called faithfulness you have to be faithful in little so that he can give you much you have to be faithful even not even lean to your own understanding because your own understanding will take you out of the will of god your own understanding will take you away from the things of god and so you have to keep your mind renewed in Christ and stay close to him. So these people that have been working healing rooms for all of these years have stayed faithful. And God will reward the faithful. It's beautiful. His spirit was so heavy here yesterday. I'm watching, I'm watching Melda up here. And we created kind of a private space, but I got her a bigger one because I'm in the back kind of seeing the needs that we need. And I, I seen we needed a, another uh, thing for her. But here she is praying over people's feet. She's washing your feet, praying for God. I mean, it's a beautiful ministry. And she'll do it for anybody. Some people, she is even taking care of their feet who can't reach their feet. She's just doing this beautiful ministry unto the Lord. Amen. We watch the girls in the back painting. Yes. You know, they're just here sitting in the presence of God Amen. because we created a space. We don't know what that's going to look like. We don't know what it's going to explode to be. We just know that we're being faithful with what he's telling us to do. Amen. Period. So it's the same with our church. Some of you guys have been coming here almost since we started. Some have since we started. And you're faithful. You're sowing into it financially. You're sowing into it helping keep it clean. You're doing jobs around here. You're helping take care of God's property. It's a gift. He's seeing, are we going to be faithful? Will we be faithful with little? And now he's saying, it's time. It's time. So when these scriptures came forth, especially with the words that came forth, and in, in the second chapter is where it talks about the shaking. But God's house is being built for his glory because people will be coming. They will be coming. The churches are going to be overflowing. The ones that are making a difference. The ones that are serving God. Because there's a lot of churches out there that are not serving God. There's a lot of churches out there that are serving their own egos and their own stuff. So it's important that we stay on task with the Lord. Amen. Stay on task. No matter what it looks like. Be faithful to him. When he's made promises to you, journal them. Write them down and remember them. 
Remember them. In his timing, they'll come into fruition if they're of him. And that's where I'm sitting right now. I'm like, God, I've done my part. And I'm going to trust you with your part now. And then once you get your part done, I'll do my part again. So we'll just walk it out with you, Lord. But I know that I know that I know when he confirms something like that in the word, he's going to do it. So it's not up to me to beg, borrow, and steal or, or bug. What it's up to me is to get on my knees and pray. That means all of us. To pray that God's perfect will be done here. Are we perfect? Absolutely not. Do you all have problems in me? Absolutely you do. But God can work through your muck and your mire. He can put you on the rock. He can transform your heart and mind. He can bring things to you that nobody else could ever bring to you. He can do things through you if you just surrender and say, I'll, I'll be available. I'll go. I'll go help. I'll do this. I'll do that. I watched people be used of God yesterday, and it was just beautiful because they came. God says, you come, I'll use you. You surrender, I'll use you. You go wherever your leader tells you to go, I'll use you there, even if you're not comfortable there. I'll use you. Because obedience is important as well. Being submitted under your leaders is very important. And not submission, you know, like the word says, I don't want you to do it in front of man when in your heart you're really not there. God looks at the heart. So if you have a problem with that, then you want to take that to God. And you want to ask him to give you a heart that will submit to your leaders, no matter who they are. Amen? Because he can work with a heart like that. So I just really feel like this morning when I was getting, trying to pull things together, I didn't know I was going to be sharing this with you guys, but I was just so excited and I wrote down all about it yesterday. It's such a marvelous picture of how we are. It's God set commands us to build the house through the prophet, and all the people are like, no, it's not time. We shouldn't do it, blah, blah, blah. And God is saying, tell them that I'll be with them. I will be with them. You can't build it on your own, but if I'm with you, I can build the house. And that's what he's done here from the beginning. God built the house. God built the house. He said, put my names on the wall. They'll be on the wall in the new sanctuary. It'll be very simple. We don't need to have elaborate. We just need a place to gather so we can worship God. So that we can allow him to fill the house so that people that are coming back can get plugged in and the new ones can come. And know that they're in the presence of God because we built it for him. Jaden and I sat up the fellowship room during the week because we wanted to do some stuff for, um, for media for her to do in the future. The minute that we started setting up that room, when we walked in there, I could feel the presence of God. It was so thick in there because we did that for him. This room, people come in, and they're like, oh, my gosh. Some of us get used to it. But at the same time, sometimes you can really feel the presence of God. I can anyways. But walking into that room after we set it up, it's like, oh, my gosh, Lord, I can feel you here. You know, we're not even going to do anything until Saturday. But, yeah, here you are waiting, waiting for us to come. It's the same with the sanctuary. Waiting. It's been a place that has been made for him by his design. Everything in here is by his design. So he dwells here. Yes. He dwells here. So he dwells with you and me. He'll confirm the things to you in the word. He'll bring confirmation to you about things that you're waiting on. Just like he did with me. And I know he's going to continue. Because I promise you this is a big task. And I know there will be things that will come against me. I already know that. But I'm not going to budge. That's right. That's right. God's given me a personality that doesn't budge. That's for sure. <laughs> <laughs> I have a heart of compassion and I love. But if God says I'm not moving. 
And I'm not moving on this. I have to believe him beyond what I see in the natural. I have to believe him. Just like when we got this property, guys, we leased it for seven years. We paid rent on it for seven years. And then when it came down to us buying it, somebody already put a bid on this building. And they had a church in a different building. They wanted this building. And we're out praying because God wouldn't let me get a loan. And I had to stand on that. He wouldn't let me go to a bank and get a loan. He was going to provide. So we all gathered, and we would go out on Thursday nights, and we'd lay our hands on the church, and we'd lay our hands over there on the, um, the kids' room. We would take dowels with scripture, and we'd put it in the ground. We all went out there, and we put scripture in the ground. We claimed this land for the Lord. And even if we didn't get it, there was a church that was buying it, but we believed that God said it was ours. But guys, it came right down to the narrow. At the very last minute, somebody that came and visited the church went home and told somebody who had been here several times, you guys should give them the money. They got a hold of me. Pastor, what do you need? Our little church rose or $24,000. Less people than we have now. And then we got 130,000, actually 134 or something like that. Whatever it was, the difference, because we paid 150. And then we went back and we said, we'll take it as is and you can have what you're asking. Then they came back and said, we'll take it as is, we'll give you what you're asking. And it came down to a vote. Dan and I went to the meeting, we sat there and I'm just squeezing his hand. <laughs> Believing God, but you know that flesh is like... And they voted, and they said, River of Life, it's your building. So it wasn't easy. So this won't be easy either, and the promises of God in your life aren't always easy, but they're truth. He's telling you. You'll know that you know because it goes in here. It doesn't make sense up here, but it goes in here. So God is on the move, guys. Keep praying for the church. Pray for your families. Pray for our community because God loves them. He'll stir the hearts, even of the people, it says. Not just the people that we need to do things for us, but the hearts of the people that he's going to bring in here. Amen? Let's pray. Father, I just really thank you that we can trust you. I thank you, God, that, that you are always talking to us. We're just not always listening. I pray today, Father God, that, that the promises that you have made to your people that maybe, maybe they have forgot about. I mean, I was even wavering, like, is this ever going to happen? And then you started bringing word to me. And I pray, God, where someone might need a word from you today, that you get it to them. I pray, Father God, that, that you would bless your people. I pray for our community, that you start stirring the hearts of the people. I pray that you start stirring, stirring the hearts of the people that we need to help us get this launched. I pray, Father God, that you start stirring the hearts of the people financially to sow into this ministry for building. I pray, Father God, that you do it by your hand. I pray, Father God, that, that you anoint your people to serve you more. To be servants, not volunteers. Servants that have a passion for the things of Christ. The servants that only want to bring glory to you and be used by you, not self-seeking. So I pray today, God, that you bless them and keep them. That your face would shine upon them. I pray, Father God, that you bless their homes and their families. And I speak to everybody's that's hearing my voice, the families that don't know Christ, I call them in, in to the knowledge, the revelation of who you are and that they will be saved and become children of God. Be with those, Lord.
help them. Some are teetering. I know it in my spirit. And I pray, Father God, that they will say yes without knowledge. And they will say it by faith. And you will meet them, Lord, and start to bring that transformation. God, we love you and we praise you. In Jesus' name, all God's people said, Amen. Amen.